listen, you all need to come out of your closed mindsets. I had a lady tell me the other day that nowadays, because of the many things that have happened on the earth and as of late, she no longer believes in coincidences. Now, I understand that many of you may disagree, but that doesn't matter. Yes, there are moments many of us have had where something that occurred was a genuine coincidence, but I know there have also been many things that you all have seen that weren't exactly a coincidence. Have you all ever come across a situation or scandal, and when you first heard the details of a situation, you may not have taken the situation seriously? You may have even dismissed what you were told because it didn't sound serious enough or credible. I know I have. You know, those kinds of situations are very similar to when a plaintiff brings a legal accusation against a defendant in a court of law. You see everyone, when the plaintiff goes before the judge, the jury, the entire courtroom, and even the public and begins to speak, they usually sound very credible. You see people are more inclined to believe the plaintiff in any dispute because they are the ones who are the alleged victim in the situation. In America, Playing the victim and being a victim are applauded and praised. So the alleged victim and what they say may seem true. That is, until someone steps up and cross-examines. You see, the plaintiff, the victim, the one who brought the accusation forth sounds believable until the defendant then speaks up. Once the defendant speaks up, all of what both parties and their representatives have said must be brought into question and must be brought into judgment. This is the type of mindset that you all need to have when observing or hearing about anything. Even if what is said sounds believable, bring what was said to you into judgment, use wisdom and be patient. Usually, there is more to the story. Now I want you all to take a look and listen closely to what I'm about to reveal to you all. I've met and spoken with a lot of people who've claimed to have done a lot of research on theological, occultic and satanic topics. When I would then begin to ask them open-ended questions, I realized they are just people who enjoy hearing themselves talk. Just like a few fools who I had in my comment sections earlier when I started this YouTube channel. They said I was mixing truth with lies purposely, but then couldn't even tell me where the lies were. Just people running their mouth. Let me begin. How many of you have seen this before? I've seen this many times. I bet most of you think this is just a fancy architectural design. Well, if that were the case, you would think something like this would be self-preserved and unique, not having multiple copies and lookalikes all around the world. But take a look at these. Do you still think this is some measly coincidence? I would hope not. Let me open your eyes some more. How many of you have heard of the false Roman god Saturn? If not, I'll explain to you who this false god is. Saturn was a Roman god of agriculture and harvest, as well as with time and wealth. He was often identified with the Greek god Cronus, who was also associated with agriculture and the harvest. In Roman mythology, Saturn was one of the titans, the offspring of Uranus and Gaia. He overthrew his father and ruled during a time of peace and prosperity known as the Golden Age. Saturn was often depicted as an old man with a long beard holding a sickle or scythe. As a god of agriculture and harvest, Saturn was often associated with abundance and fertility. He was also seen as a god of time, with the mythological concept of the golden age being associated with his reign. Saturn was also associated with wealth and accumulation of resources. In Roman mythology, Saturn is sometimes depicted as having a harsh and cruel attitude. This is reflected in the myth of Saturn eating his children, which was meant to symbolize the destructive power of time and the cycle of nature of life and death. However, he was also seen as a just and fair ruler during the Golden Age. Some of the symbols associated with Saturn include the sickle or scythe, which represents his role as a god of agriculture and harvest, and the hourglass or sundial, which represents his association with time. The planet Saturn is also named after him and was believed to influence the sense of duty, responsibility, and hard work in those born under his influence. In summary, Saturn was a false Roman god associated with agriculture, harvest, time, and wealth. 
He was often depicted as an old man with a long beard, holding a sickle or scythe, while he was associated with abundance and fertility. He was also known for his harsh and cruel nature. I wonder who that sounds like. Let me go deeper. There is a long-standing and obvious relationship between the false Roman god Saturn and the Black Cube, as well as with Saturn worship. The Black Cube is a symbol that has been associated with Saturn worship in various cultures and religions throughout history. In Roman mythology, Saturn was associated with the planet Saturn, which was considered the farthest planet from the sun at that time and was often associated with darkness and the underworld. In ancient Roman religion, Saturn was worshipped during the festival of Saturnalia, which was held in mid-December and celebrated the winter solstice. The worship of Saturn in ancient Rome was characterized by the use of a black stone or cube, known as the quote, Baal Haman, or the Elagabalus stone. This stone was believed to have fallen from the sky and was associated with the god Baal Haman, whom was worshipped in ancient Carthage and was also associated with Saturn. The use of the black stone or cube as a symbol of Saturn worship continued in other cultures and religions over time. For example, in Islamic tradition, the Kaaba and Mecca, which is a large cube-shaped structure, is believed to have been built by the prophet Abraham and is considered a sacred site for Muslims. The Hindu god Shiva is often depicted holding a black stone or lingam, which is a phallic symbol that represents his power and creative energy. In contemporary times, some groups and individuals have adopted Saturn worship as a form of spirituality or religious practice. This can involve the use of symbols such as the black cube, as well as the study and interpretation of ancient texts and myths associated with Saturn. So there is an obvious connection and association between the appearance of the black cube and worship of the false evil Roman god Saturn. Let me even go deeper. Do you see how the word Saturn is spelled? Now take out the letter R and pronounce the word out loud. Whose name did you say out loud? I bet you just said Satan. And if you didn't say it out loud, you said it in your inner mind. Many of mankind here on earth always point out how some, not all, but some of those who are in power and didn't come to achieve great amounts of wealth and power by hard work or inheritance are people who have sold out to Satan. For those of you who know the power and history of Satan, you know that Satan has also made many deals with both men and women in the past to bless them with great wealth in exchange for their service and for their souls. So is it just a coincidence that the false Roman god Saturn also is a malevolent god who can bless mankind with an abundance of wealth? No, it is not. But I know many of you still aren't convinced that what you've heard is sufficient enough. So let me go even deeper than before. Let's take a look at the number six. The number six is Satan's favorite number. It is also the false Roman god Saturn's favorite number as well. Saturn is the sixth planet in the solar system. If you acknowledge and observe that Monday is the first day of the week, then Saturday would be the sixth day. Unless, of course, you recognize the Sabbath as being Saturday, which was the true Sabbath day before the Catholic Church changed it to Sunday. Saturn, Saturday, I'm sure you get it. Saturn's hexagon North Pole is also six-sided. The planet Saturn has six well-defined rings around the planet. The seventh one is very faint. At the intersection of religion, architecture, satanic and Saturnian cults, Saturn and the black cube collide. Many have worshipped Saturn and Satan for centuries. Some are even people who possess significant wealth and influence. The increased use of Saturn symbolism in the black cube has gone unnoticed by many of mankind. Some even see these symbols as a warning that the world is soon to be overrun by dark forces, and one day they will. But before dismissing these symbols, it's important to remember that symbols exist for a reason and the world is full of them. Another interesting connection between the false woman god Saturn, Satan, the planet Saturn, and wealth is that diamonds precipitate on the exact planet that we're discussing. 
It was first discovered by NASA's Cassini spacecraft, which observed strange bright spots in Saturn's atmosphere. Subsequent research found that these bright spots were likely caused by lightning strikes that converted methane gas into carbon, which would then rain down onto Saturn's surface as graphite. As this carbon-rich material descended deeper into the planet's atmosphere, it became subject to extreme pressures and temperatures, transforming into solid diamond crystals. The diamonds that are created in Saturn's atmosphere are believed to be millions of carats in size, making them some of the largest diamonds ever discovered. However, they are not of the high-quality gemstone variety that we are familiar with on Earth, as they are formed under very different conditions. Interesting how American culture, along with many other countries and the cultures in those countries, continually push the idea that wearing diamonds is a show of splendor, luxury, and wealth. Yet at the same time, there's a malevolent false Roman god who would be more than happy to grant these people the desire to have these diamonds <laughs> by causing them to rain down on their heads until they are destroyed completely. I told you all that Satan's influence, imagery, and power is found all over the place. Not so much of coincidence now, is it? Bye.